Hello friends. A few months ago, I bought the Mi Wi-Fi router four. It looks not bad, but there are not many firmware available for this device. You may know that I have several routers. I have installed OpenWRT, Padawan, and ISSWRT on other routers. But for the Wi-Fi router four, I haven't done too much. Wi-Fi router four is very similar to the Realme router. It ships with the commonly used MediaTek processor and the NAT storage. I know the OpenWRT source code supports it. Just not many people compile firmware for it, so I think better compile an OpenWRT firmware from the source code. You know the developers have pushed the OpenWRT source code to GitHub. We can review or update the code there. But we cannot directly run the source code. That is because the source code is not executable. We need to compile the source code to an executable software. Then we write the software, aka firmware, into the router. Compiling firmware is a professional job. You need to have some knowledge to do it, and some necessary tools are required. Especially a Linux machine is required. You need to know how to run the Linux commands. All right. Talking about Linux, we can create a Linux virtual machine with VMware VirtualBox. We can also buy a cloud virtual machine. That's your call. But in this video, we don't talk about how to create virtual machines. That's another topic. In this video, I just use the virtual machine on AWS Cloud to save some time. It's very easy to buy a cloud virtual machine if you have an AWS account. You create a cloud virtual machine with just a few clicks. It's no different than a virtual machine on your laptop. I'm creating the virtual machine with Ubuntu 20.04. Ubuntu Linux is really easy to use. I'm going to use it to compile the firmware. I select this two cores and four gigs memory class machine. It's not free, but I will delete this machine after the job is done, so it won't cost much. If you forget to delete it, then there will definitely be a cost, all right? After the virtual machine is created, we just log in the VM and start the job. First, we install some necessary tools for the compiling job. The tools are listed on the OpenWRT website. We can easily install the packages with a single command, apt get install. That is how we install applications in Ubuntu Linux. OK, the tools are installed. Next, we pull the source code to the virtual machine. The source code is stored in the git repo. We run the git command to get the code. Git is a very useful tool, which is commonly being used by developers. You should know a little about git, even if you are not a developer, all right? Now the source code is pulled down. We see there are multiple folders. Those are just the basic OpenWRT code. It's just the basic system functions. Uh, a lot of all applications are not included, such as the web interface. So we use this feed script to pull down the applications. The feed script will grab all the applications in this list, feeds.config.default to the Linux machine. All the application addresses are defined in this list. Of course, if you have some uh, customized fields, you can add them in the file. Later, they can be pulled down as well. Mm -hmm. 
Now we run face update to download the applications. Then face install to add the applications into the make menu. If there's another application that you want uh, which is not in a feed, you can also directly put it into the package directory, just like this. Later you will see it in the menu as well. Next we will run the make menu config command to define the parameters. We see it's like a new window pops out. Here we need to select which processor is being used by the main Wi Fi router for. The router has a processor, right? Just like your phone, your computer, everything has a processor. Mostly, if two routers ship with the same kind of processor, we say they are based on a same platform. The brand of the Wi Fi router for's processor is MediaTek. So we click on spacebar to select this one. MediaTek is very popular, they make good chipset. Next, uh, we select the model of the processor. For the Wi-Fi router 4, it is MT7621. Next, we select the target profile. Seems we need to find which exact router we are using. Oh, I see the Wi-Fi router 4 is in the list. Select it. If you don't find your router in the list, then maybe it's not supported yet. Mm, maybe. I think better leave other configurations as default. So I just uh, skip the other things. And check if the web interface is selected. I'd prefer to have a web interface in the firmware. Uh, it's not selected, so I just select it. Here we need to press spacebar twice to select. If you need other applications such as OpenVPN, just select it from the network list, like this. Again, press spacebar twice. Also remember to select the web interface module for OpenVPN, otherwise you can only use OpenVPN with the command line. Here I see the application that was added earlier, it's shown in the list now. I will select it as well. Now we save the configurations and exit the make menu. All the settings are saved into this .config file. We can open it and uh, do a review. If you find something that you don't want, you can still remove it by comment out that line. Okay, now everything is ready. It's time to compile. In the OpenWRT directory, we just run the make command. The GCC tool will start to make a firmware. This will take a long time. We better do the job in a screen, just in case the job is interrupted. Now it's doing job. I just leave it there. We'll get back in a while. Tomorrow. It really takes some time to compile the firmware. I think the job is done now. It took me three hours. Please leave your comments below and let me know how long it takes for you. Basically, that is the reason why I don't like to use my laptop to do the job. Because it takes so long to compile. It's such a heavy burden for my laptop. The cloud server is definitely a better option. 
The film is just in the bin target's directory. We see there are several files in the directory. That is because the Wi-Fi router 4 has multiple partitions. To install OpenWrt, we need to flash the two images into two different partitions, Kernel 1 partition and the RootFS 0 partition. We download it to local. Okay, so far we have successfully compiled the firmware. The size of the firmware is not very large, but it took so long to compile. Very interesting, right? Please let me know how can we make it faster if you have any idea. We have compiled the firmware, but uh, does the firmware really work? I'm actually not sure if this firmware can be flashed successfully. So I'll try to flash it and see how it goes. Previously, I have flashed the OpenWrt on the router. If you have watched my videos, you know how to do the job, right? Three steps to take. First, we need to log in the stock firmware, then transfer the OpenWrt firmware into the router, then run the mtd command, which is available in the stock firmware to write OpenWrt into the router. SSH is locked by default. But I just use this OpenWrt invasion script to log in the stock firmware. It works very well for the Mi Wi Fi router 4. It's written in Python programming language and bash language. Just download the script to the laptop. Connect the router to the internet. Connect laptop to the router. Log in the router and make sure the stock firmware version is the same as them. Open a terminal, cd into the OpenWrt Invasion directory. The script is written in Python. Start Python to run the script. The router's IP address is the default 192.168.31.1, and we need to provide the token to get authorized. You will find the token in the address bar. Just this string is the token. Now the OpenWrt Invasion script is starting to work. It will open the 22SSH port for us to connect. OK, we can connect now. The firmware that we just compiled are downloaded to the laptop, two files in total. I start a Python simple HTTP server to transfer the files. After the files are transferred to the router, we need to run this mtd command on the router to write the firmware into the partitions. There are actually multiple partitions on the router. We write the first firmware image into the kernel 1 partition and the second one into rootfs0 partition. OK, now we set up the configurations to boot from the kernel 1 partition. This router has two kernels, so we need to tell it which kernel to use, alright? We need to configure it to boot from the kernel 1. The configurations are stored in nvrun. So we run these a few nvrun commands to set it up. Now everything is done. 
the firmware has been flashed. It's time to reboot. I'm starting to feel a bit nervous. Really hope this firmware could work. It takes around two minutes for the first boot. Okay, well, I'm in now. It really works. We can see the software that we pre-configured. An open VPN is also available here. It's really a success. You may feel it's so complex to compile a firmware. Installing OpenWRT is difficult already. Now it's more difficult to compile a firmware. Why not just download a compiled firmware from the form? That is because it's easier to do the customization with all this complex compiling procedure. If we need some apps, we can help them pre-configure in the firmware. It's just easier to use in the future. Alright, that is all for this video. This video requires some Linux knowledge to watch. If you find it difficult to follow, you need to subscribe to my YouTube channel and watch my other videos. Hope it can be helpful. Bye-bye!